Minetrier's disease. Okay, Minetrier's disease, also known as protein losing gastropathy, also known as um, nephrotic syndrome, syndrome of the stomach, also known as hypoproteinemic hypertrophic gastropathy. What's all of that? We will see. So, let's get started with Minetrier's disease. Okay, so this disease is rare, most common in male. Okay, around like 40 years old. But let's go, let's see the normal first. So, the stomach wall has four layers. Mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, and serosa. That's normal. Okay. What else? The gastric wall, okay, has the mucosa, the inner layer. And this mucosa has epithelium and lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. Let's go to the epithelium. Epithelium has two parts. The pits, also known as fabulas, and the glands. So the pit is like the opening and the duct of the gland. They are interconnected. Okay. Anatomically, this stomach has four parts. The cardia, the fundus, the body, and the pylorus. Each of them had glands. The cardiac glands, as fovular cells, they secrete mucus. The fundus, fundus gland has chief cells for pepsinogen, and parietal cells, which secrete HCL. Okay. The pylorus has cells that secrete mucus and also some G cells that secrete gastrin. Okay, so fovular cells, mucus, chief cells, pepsinogen, parietal cells, hydrochloric acid, pyloric glands, mucus, G cells, gastrin. Don't forget parietal cells also secrete the intrinsic factor which help absorption of vitamin B12. That's important. Okay, let's go to the mechanism of the disease. Let's go to the pathology. What causes Minetier's disease is still debatable, but it's probably either human CMV virus or H. pylori. The problem in Minetrier's disease is hyperplasia of these glands, fovular hyperplasia. When these glands undergo hyperplasia, they will lead to increase, increase mucus secretion. This mucus is protein, by the way. This is important. Okay, hyperplasia is bad. Why? There is evil, which means cancer. Any hyperplasia is precursorous to cancer, except for... BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, is not precancerous. What else? This hyperplasia of these fovular cells will affect the other cells, will compete with them, will knock them off, so they will undergo hypoplasia and atrophy. Atrophy of the chief cells leading to less pepsinogen and less pepsin. Okay, because this reaction, like pepsinogen, gets converted into pepsin. Okay, and this by the help of pepsin, by the help of the HCL, this one. Okay, also the parietal cells are getting knocked off, so hydrochloric acid will decrease, leading to decreased hydrogen ions, and decreasing the intrinsic factor leading to malabsorption of 
vitamin B12. Okay. As a response to this decrease in the hydrogen ions, the G cells will increase more gastrin. So, let's summarize the problem. We have increased mucus secretion, decreased pepsinogen and pepsin, decreased hydrochloric acid, decreased intrinsic factor, increased gastrin as a response. This is the problem. Okay, also, as a note, TGF alpha, okay, is responsible for Menetrier's disease. What's TGF? It's transforming growth factor alpha. Okay, that's cool. So, the complications in Menetrier's disease are, mm -hmm. let's see, we have fovular hyperplasia, so there is increased risk of gastric adenocarcinoma. Perfect. There is loss of vitamin B12 because it's not absorbed, because there is no intrinsic factor. So, on the long run, there is megaloblastic anemia. Perfect. Okay, now, take care. Increased mucus secretion. This mucus is protein. When it is secreted into the lumen of the stomach, it's lost. It will be lost in the GI tract. This is protein being lost. Plus, decreased pepsin will lead to indigestion of proteins, which is also proteins being lost. This plus this equals protein losing gastropathy. What happens when you lose protein? You lose the oncotic pressure and you end up with generalized pitting edema. What are the causes of generalized pitting edema? Serotic nephrotic and CHF. And since nephrotic syndrome is kidney losing protein and meningeal disease is the stomach losing protein, they are kind of the same thing. Okay, what's next? What's the differential diagnosis of large folds of the stomach? Let's go back to this. So in this slide you see here, the hyperplasia, the fovular hyperplasia, have led to increase in this pits, in this fovula. So what will happen? It will be increased rugae or rugae or rugae on the surface of the stomach. This is very important. These are increase of rugae. Okay. So... What's the differential diagnosis of large folds in the stomach? Usually, it's kind of gastritis, but what's the cause behind that? Okay, we have Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. What's Zollinger-Ellison syndrome? It's a gastrinoma. It's increased gastrin. Okay, and remember, Menetrier's disease has increase of gastrin in response to the low HCL. So both of them are kind of the same increased gastrin. Cancer, okay, or infection, especially with the H. pylori, can lead to the same thing. Also, infiltration, such as sarcoidosis. These are differentials for large folds. How to diagnose this disease? First, you can do x ray with barium swallow to see those rugae in the stomach. You can do endoscopy with biopsy to see this hyperplasia of the fovular glands and hypoplasia of the parietal cells and the chief cells in the stomach. Also, you can see some lymphocytes due to like kind of inflammatory reaction. You can do serology to catch CMV and H. pylori, which are part of the causes of this weird miniature's disease. Okay, what else? How to treat this disease? Remember, there is a growth factor involved in the disease. Let's use a monoclonal antibody against this receptor. Let's use an antibody to target this receptor and block it so we stop the reaction that leads to Menetrier's disease. 
Also, let's give the patient high protein diet to compensate for the protein losing gastropathy. Gastropathy. Also, we can use the same oral drugs that we use for peptic ulcer disease, such, such as proton pump inhibitors, anticholinergics, IH2 blockers, um, prostaglandins, um, maybe steroids because there is an inflammatory response. Um, anticholinergic has been shown to decrease the protein loss, which is good. If everything fails, usually we call who? The surgeon. Let's remove this stomach because it's wreaking havoc on the body. That's miniature air disease. Everything you need to know. See you next video. Please subscribe for new videos every week. Thank you.